What are the reasons that contribute to the end or to the failure of the communism and to the failure of socialism? What are the real reasons? But before going on with the presentation, remember that I have my book on sales. Remember to give me your like, subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. It will help a lot. Uh, the idea, the socialist idea and the socialist implementation through socialist government and communist government was nurtured between the 18th, 19th century in Europe especially. Uh, and it is understandable because at that time there were a lot of injustices and there were a lot of discrimination. People was, uh, most of the people was living in poverty, so there, there, there were huge economical differences between people around the world. So it was the perfect time to the birth of this ideology. And if you, if you look at the essential aspects of this ideology, for example, equality between men, uh, for example, a better distribution of resources, and finally, a better way of life. It could be very tempting. So it is understandable that uh, the basic idea of socialism and communism could be very tempting for most or for many people around the world. Unfortunately, the results have been very different from the premises and from the promises that have been made Let's see why the socialist ideas and the communist governments have failed and maybe how they have evolved to a new form of socialism that we are living nowadays. So, when we talk about socialism and communism, we, have to, we don't have a single model to analyze we have to take in consideration different forms of socialism and communism. The first one, the Soviet Union style. And then we have the European socialist that have been evolved through the years, since the 18th century, to what we have nowadays. Then we have the allegoric form of socialism in Latin America and communism. Allegoric because in some cases it could seem a joke and that's the bitter reality. Then we have the Chinese socialism and which is the only one that didn't fail and we will analyze why it didn't fail. And then we have another kind that is the monarchic socialism. So that is a, a form of government that resembles more to a monarchy than a socialist country. So let's try to analyze the different expression and the different form of socialism. But if you are interested on the subject, there is also a very interesting book written by Frederick Hayek, The Fatal Conceit, and it talks about uh, all the mistakes of socialist. So it's very interesting if you are, if if the subject is appealing to you, I recommend to read this book. So let's analyze why communism and socialism and socialism have failed. But before analyzing the failure of socialism and communism, we have 
to also to spend a few words about the opposite ideologies. The opposite I ideologist is the liberal ideology. So what is in extreme, in extreme synthesis a liberal ideas, a liberal's ideals? Well, basically to let people free of doing what they want in the respect of the others. So the, the freedom to start whatever business, whatever activity they like, the freedom to, and the respect to private property. So, in a liberal society, you are free to do almost what you want with the exception or with the limitation to respect the law and do not damage the other people of, of your community. This is the basic idea of the basic, the basic liberal idea. But to return to the, the communist, why the communism a failed? Even though, if you listen at the communist and socialist ideals, I mean, they are appealing. Who doesn't want a better world? Who doesn't want the equality? Unfortunately, the failure came from, started with the, for several reasons. The first reason are economic. The economical model of the Soviet Union failed. And because it failed, uh, also it was the main re reason why the old system failed. With, with the end of the Soviet communist, also in Europe, the other socialist idea evolved toward new, in search of new objectives. For example, the protection of the environment, or the equality, or the, um, the quality between, or the gender equality. So, from the end of the socialist idea in the Soviet Union, Europe and also in part United States, evolved with a new idea of socialism. And we have an example of the new socialism with the Agenda 2030 that has been pushed by the United Nations. If you look through the Agenda of 2030, you will easily see how it is fulfilled of socialist ideas, but they are presented in a different way. At the same time, I would like to, to clarify that even for a liberal, or, or for the liberals in the political sense, environment is important, and, and it is the same important, or in some cases, even more important there, for example, from, for, from, for the people that wrote the Agenda 2030. Why? An example, Elon Musk. Elon Musk is an, a brilliant entrepreneur, a liberal one. A, but he did something real for environment. For example, the old electric car industry, it is what it is nowadays, thanks to him. So, it, Instead of saying just true word that is in favor of the environment, actually he did something in concrete. Also, by the exploitation of the sun power with the solar, solar, solar panels. So, there are people, and he is, I think, one of the great examples in the liberal world that understand the environment even more the one or the progressist one, or the new socialist one, that by word they, they say that they are pro-environment, but they fly with their own private jet, jet. So they are not that in favor at the end of the day, if you want to be a little bit critic. Then you go to another kind of socialism, 
and, and, and this is the allegoric socialism that you find especially in Latin America. So the, the one that started the Latin America philosophy was Fidel Castro. Fidel was particularly smart, a very intelligent lawyer. With the, it was extremely able uh, to express his idea with words. He was one of the greatest orators, probably, of, of the last century. And, and he started the Latin American socialism. But the one that was able to spread it was Hugo Chavez in Venezuela. Therefore, this, despite the intent of coup d'etat in 1992 of Hugo, of Hugo Chavez, thanks to the pardon of President Caldera, the same Hugo Chavez was able to be elected president in 1998. So, Hugo Chavez started what we know as socialism of the 21st century. And the result has been even more pathetic than what we experienced in the east part of Europe with the Soviet Union. Venezuela, one of the most rich countries in the world, now is one of the, of the poorest ones. But not only Venezuela, another place where socialism uh, found a good land to grow is Argentina with the Peronist. In, in, in the Peronist Argentina also um, the socialist idea destroyed the economy and the life of the citizen. All politicians throughout the world, they have some tendency to corruption. But in the Latin country, maybe this tendency is a little bit more strong than in the Anglo-Saxon culture. So if you see what they do with the public money, the only conclusion that you come is that it's an allegoric form of socialism. But then, and then you have another form, the monarchic one. For example, you can, you can have also the allegoric and monarchic one together. For example, Fidel Castro, when he retired, for a few years, he passed the throne to his brother, Raul Castro. In Venezuela, when Hugo Chavez died, he designed uh, Nicolás Maduro, a brilliant man, to become president. So in that way, you can say that also it could be a monarchic way to understand socialism. But also, you have other examples of the monarchic, monarchic socialism. For example, in North Korea. In North Korea, you have a dynasty where, the, where grandfather, son, and their children uh, pass the, the throne of power between them three. So, but what are the reasons why the socialism idea failed? Well, there are several reasons. Let's start from some to arrive at the most important one. We, 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 we let the most important as a last reason that we will analyze. But first one, let's examine equality. Uh, socialism want to achieve equality by pressing all the people. Unfortunately, Everybody on earth, we are different from other. There are no two people that are the same on earth. So there is a misconception, a fatal misconception of equality. And the misconception is this one. You must uh, give to people equal condition to succeed. But you cannot press people, because if you press people, instead of a of an equal society, you, you will get a, a dictator, a dictatorship. You have a society without freedom. So the idea of pressing the people is opposite to freedom. Second, uh, socialism is violent. Socialism 
um, limit your freedom. That's the, the second element. In a social society, you are not living in a free society. <clears throat> the main reason that why communists failed and socialism failed is because they have a great misconception. They believe that they are better than the market. They, have the, they are quite arrogant. They believe that public administration, members of the party, are more intelligent than the market. Unfortunately, the market is more intelligent. So, the public way to administer, to manage a society, always destroy resources, castrate people, and finally bring the people to poverty, because they have the arrogance to believe themselves better than the market. So, the fatal mistake is this one, to think the man, the politician, and the party more intelligent of the market. And instead of being more intelligent, it destroyed the market. It destroyed the life of their citizen. Finally, I would like to spend a few words about China. China is uh, a different story because Chinese, but for many reasons. The first reason is Chinese people culture. They are people extremely focused on their job, on their work, and, they're, and they are so committed with what they do and with their culture that they were able to understand that the communist way to understand the world like the one of the Soviet Union, you know, wasn't working. So Deng Xiaoping, it was the president of China, understood that it was the time of a change. So it, it opened China to libertarian economic idea. And thanks to the wisdom and the intelligence of Deng Xiaoping, together with the laboriosity of the Chinese people that are amazing, they were able to, to be so successfully economically. So it's the only model that it is that, that has been the only socialist model that has been successful. Then you might argue, but are they really socialist? Well, you decide if they are or if they aren't. But the, the fact of the matter is that they are successful economically and in China right now you don't you, you live well. I mean you have plenty of opportunity. At the opposite of other communist regimes that they have destroyed the future of their people. China has been successful. So, if you like the video, give me your like and share, and share it with your friends.